Hello and welcome to erpwebtutor.com. In this video, we are going to show you how to run a full payroll for the US. So to do that, I am going to go to the payroll and then payroll calculation. You can also navigate from the navigator. And then here you will see under payroll, you have payroll calculation. So either way, you can go to the same place. And this is actually in release 13. And here on the first thing that you need to do to run the payroll from the task, you're going to click on submit a payroll flow. The payroll flow will allow you to perform all the steps in a sequential manner. So you will not miss any steps. So you first select your legislative data group. In this case, it's going to be US. And then I'm going to run the delivered US simplified payroll cycle. You can build custom flow as well. So select it and then click next. Then you are going to give a flow name, which is very important. And the flow names must be unique for every payroll. And it's also recommended that you follow a specific naming convention so that later on you can find your flows. So before I name the flow, I'm going to uh, find the payroll that I'm going to run. Let's say I'm going to run the, this is actually a bi-weekly payroll cycles defined here. So first let me select the payroll. I'm going to search and I'm going to select the EWT bi-weekly. And let me run this, uh, let's say the fourth payroll of 2018. So I can just type in for 2018 and then search, or let's see how the payroll periods are defined. So you can see that this is the for 2018. Uh, this is the payroll that I'm trying to run. Okay. So I'm going to select this. That will populate my payroll period. I don't need to enter any overrides for the process end date or the date earned because it is going to inherit from the payroll calendar definition. Okay. Same thing with the overwrite payment date. I also don't need to choose any consolidation group in this case because I only have one consolidation group. This is going to be a regular run. So I'm going to select a regular run. If I want to process this for a specific group of employees, then I can select this payroll relationship group. But for this particular example, we are trying to run for the entire population. Also, if I want to process only a specific element or a set of elements, I can create an element group and select that particular group. Now let's choose the check payment method. It's going to be check. <coughs> And then the EFT payment method is going to be direct deposit. The payment source, if you have multiple payment sources for your uh, EFT uh, payment uh, method, similarly, if you have multiple payment sources for your check payment method, then you can choose the particular source. Sources are nothing but two different bank accounts from where you issue your checks or direct deposits. Okay, So if you have defined different multiple bank accounts for each of these methods, then you can choose uh, or it will use the default payment source for each of these payment methods. The starting check number. So when you first run the process the first time in your system, you can specify a starting number and that's the very first payroll that you will run in your system. And after that, the system will uh, show you the starting check number uh, as the next number based on the checks that have been issued. So if your last check was issued for 259, in this case, the starting check number is 260. Okay. I'm not going to select any process configuration group. So I'm going to now give a name to this flow. So what I will do is I'm going to copy this payroll period and I'm going to use the same name and I'm going to say this is A or you can say one so that this is the very first run. So in case you have to 
roll back and have to rerun, then you can use the, the same payroll period, the same flow with a B or C. That way your flow names are, are distinct, yet it clearly says that this is for this particular um, payroll flow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prefix this with my initial so that I can uh, easily find it. So this is my flow name. This is my payroll. So everything is set. So I can hit next. That way I can go through the, the steps. Uh, but I can also submit the flow here, right here. So let me just click next to show you. Uh, you can have different flow interaction. You can schedule this flow as, as soon as possible or it's uh, at a specific schedule. And once you are done entering all those details, most of the clients would probably not navigate through all the steps. They would just enter the, the parameters and they will hit submit. But anyways, I'm going to submit it from here. So once you submit the payroll, you can either hit OK or OK and view checklist. I always recommend my clients to hit OK and view checklist. That way you can see the progress of this particular payroll. So if let's click on OK and view checklist. So you can see that my payroll flow has, has started. Now the very first thing that uh, I would like to show you a few things here. You can see that these um, these are the different steps, and then each step has its own tasks, and you can see the status of each of these tasks. So this is the calculate section, this is the, the payment, and this is the accounting section. So for this particular demonstration, we're going to only focus up to the payments. Um, and there's the first step as the, the pre-process where it is checking for any retroactive uh, transactions. Uh, there are some the reports and that you can run, um, but one thing that you need to notice here is the task type. So you can see if you keep your cursor on the, the task type that has a little a human being with a green check mark, that means it is a manual task. That means you need to verify this task, whatever you need to do, and you need to mark this task as complete. And if you see this gear, which is an automatic task, and the system will automatically complete this task and move to the next task, okay? So at any given point of time, if there is a manual task, you need to you know, actually mark it as complete or you can skip, but you actually need to do something for to tell the flow to move on to the next task. Okay? Now, in this case, let's say I have already verified my retro notification report. Uh, so I am going to uh, mark this particular task as complete. So two ways of doing it. One is you highlight this task, click on action, and you can say mark as complete. Okay. Or you can just simply right click on this row and also you will get the same set of actions and you can say mark as complete. So once you mark it as complete, what the system will do, it will change the status to complete and it will move to the next task. So let's mark it as complete. At this point, basically, if you have any reports or anything that you want to check, uh, and this retro notification report, there's nothing to check actually. So we can simply mark it as complete. So mark as complete. Okay, it's gonna say you are about to perform the action. Do you want to continue? Say yes. And you can see that this is actually something new in release 13. In release 12, we did not actually see that. Do you want to continue? It just automatically changed the status uh, with the confirmation saying that this is updated. Okay. Okay. So once that completes, uh, it will move on to the next step. So let's just refresh. This is the refresh to see the changes that has happened. And actually, now it also supports this automatic refresh. And you can see that this is uh, 
maybe I just selected something. Yeah, I just thought mark as complete. Maybe I selected the wrong one. Okay. Yeah, so I probably selected the incorrect one. So I just clicked on the wrong uh, action. So it's now it's complete. And you can see that this green, green check mark means that this is completed. Okay. The next one, it is an automatic task. So it is going to recalculate payroll for retroactive changes, which it is doing. And the moment this is complete, you can already see that this go to task icon got enabled as soon as this was, this had the green check mark. That tells me that this the system is actually doing this particular task. You can click on this task, this go to task to see more details about this particular action. So I have clicked on this go to task. So it is actually taking me to the steps or the sub processes that it has done for the uh, retroactive changes. As you can see that there's, uh, there's nothing is actually processed here because there's probably no retro transactions. Okay. So it has zero records. I can click on done. Okay. So now again, the system is waiting for me to verify this retroactive report. Now, this there's no delivered report as such for this retroactive report uh, as a part of the delivered flow, but you can run additional reports and then you can tell your client to run those reports and make sure that those retroactive changes are, are correct. And once they have verified those, they can mark this as complete. So since we are getting some issues with the right clicks, I'm going to use the actions. I'm going to say mark as complete. And you can see that the checklist was updated and it should also now have the green check mark. So once this has the green check mark, it is now moving to the next step, which is the calculate payroll. Even though the status is showing that it has not started, but uh, I, I, can, I can see that this go to task arrow uh, is now visible, which tells me that this is actually happening. And what you can do is you can click on the refresh to see what is happening. The other thing, let me tell you, you can uh, expand all these tasks by clicking on view and expand all. So it's going to expand all the possible tasks the system is going to perform to complete the payroll. Okay. And as you can see now, um, let me just click on refresh. As you can see that my calculate payroll has completed successfully. And I can actually go into this task to see the people that were processed. And if there are any issues with any of the employees, this would have a red cross mark. And then you would actually go in and see and verify what has gone wrong with these employees with, or any of these employees. And then you'd, you'd manually fix and then you will um, come back and then maybe retry or if, you, if there's, a, there's only one employee you, you want to fix later, you can roll back that one employee and then proceed with the rest of the employees. Now, all of these uh, employees have been processed. Keep in mind, these are all uh, fictitious data. So uh, this is not, uh, not a real data. Okay. But anyways, this, this tells me that there's 20 records were processed. So if I know that how many employees are supposed to get processed, um, so I would, uh, this would give me a quick uh, view okay, and I all I can also uh, click on any of these employees to see the the details of their statement of earnings and, and additional details of what was processed. Okay, you can see that this is the gross pay. So this is a significant improvement from release 12. Things have changed, uh, and you can see that this look and feel has also changed. This is the gross pay. Uh, this is the total, and it also gives you the the year to date run. Um, the net payment, so uh, the employee tax deductions, pre-tax deductions. And if you expand, uh, it will give you all the different uh, earnings. Uh, and you can see some additional 
let's say if I click on the pre-tax deductions, it shows me that there's a medical pre-tax and then there's a dental pre-tax, okay? This is like the statement of earnings for the employee. Okay, this is the statement of earnings. Okay. So once, so if somebody has, if something is wrong, you can, you will see on the error that what has gone wrong. So I'm, I'm good with verifying this employees and everything is working as expected. And you can see that next thing, what it has done, it has, it has run the gross to net report. I can click on this go to task. Okay, so you can see that this is my report. I can see view uh, task details. This is actually the summary. Okay, so it's under the process. You can see that this is the actual report. Uh, this is a little bit of a browser issue. Uh, this, this works best in Firefox. So you can see that in release 12, it's in the view results. Because this is a report, you will see a PDF file. So you can click on this, and then the PDF file will, uh, will be downloaded, or you can view it. So this is the PDF file. This is the, the delivered gross to net report. Now, one thing that you will see here is that uh, this is just the, the overall gross to net report that you can see. It, this will give you all the deductions and all the, the pre-tax employer liabilities, all those details that, them, that your payroll user can verify, okay? This is the standard gross to net report. So moving on back to the flow, so I can cancel this and I can click on done. So once that particular report is verified, you can see that there's also again a, a, a checkpoint that says verify reports because it has run this report. It, it, it wants the users to verify that report. So once that verification is complete, the, the payroll user is going to mark this step as complete and then you can see that it's going to move to the next step, which is the calculate prepayments, okay? So prepayment is basically the process of grouping the employees based on their payment methods, whether the checks or direct deposit, it's going to, uh, it's going to create, it's going to separate the employees, okay? So again, uh, I can click on refresh to see the updated status. So you can see that my verify reports uh, check mark is complete. Uh, it has also done the calculate prepayments uh, and, and then there's a verify prepayment. So this, this is also a manual step. And we can go in here to the calculate prepayments and it will see that, you know, this is the details of this employees, okay? Okay, and if you actually, if this, in this particular environment, I think it's only one payment method. So if somebody has multiple, then we'll be able to see the splits. Okay, if there's a direct deposit and a check or two different direct deposits, then you will see all the splits happening. Okay. Okay, so let's click on done. And then verify prepayments. So since um, there's nothing really much to verify apart from you know who is getting how much in a check versus a direct deposit. If if you have any any custom report that you built, then you can run those that report and verify. Okay. So again, I'm going to mark this as complete, and then you can see that once this is complete, it's going to archive, it's going to run the register, it's going to run a bunch of processes and reports, and all the way up to here, it is actually. Uh, a bunch of automatic tasks. So if it is an automatic task, there's no manual intervention required. So beyond this point, uh, we can let the system do its task and uh, we will get back once it gets to this verify payslip step, okay? 
So I'm going to mark this verify prepayments as complete. And you can see that this is checklist was updated. And then I'm going to let the system run the steps from the distribute payment, so all the steps. So the archive is going to finalize the payroll, then it's going to run the payroll register. We're going to see the output of the payroll register. It's going to create the, the EFT payments, check payments. So the EFT payments is going to uh, create the NACHA file. The, the check payments is going to create the check files. It's going to generate the pay slips. And then and we will we'll come back and verify the pay slips. So my processes have completed. So the, my archive has completed. I can uh, click on this, go to task. And keep in mind that if at any of this point, if something goes wrong, uh, you will see a red cross mark. And then you will actually have to um, go through this process of uh, reviewing what went wrong. Okay. So you can see that my 20 records that were processed, uh, all of them are here. So there's nothing really to check here. This is the system that does all the archiving. Uh, let's see the next one, which is the payroll register report. We can click on go to task. And here I can see 19 and the reason I'm seeing 19 is because if you notice, so I'm going to take a step back. Uh, in my calculate payroll, if I go back to my calculate payroll, there is this employee who does not have any pay, which is why this is not there in my payroll register. Okay. So even though he was part of this payroll, but did not have any salary or anything. So that's why my payroll register is showing me 19 records. So let me go back to the payroll register and then quickly show you the output. Okay, I can view it from the view results. Since this is a report, my view results will show me this payroll register report. Now I just downloaded this report so that I can show you. And this is the payroll register report. And the reason this is such a small report, usually the payroll register reports are pretty big. And you can see that this report has run in a summary mode. When you are running the payroll, the payroll user actually runs this report in a detailed mode so they can see all the details of all the employees, complete details of all the employees, their all their earnings, all the deductions, taxes, um, their uh, the deferred compensation, pre-tax, everything needs to be detailed. Okay. Now, since this report by default runs in the summary mode, that's why you're not seeing the details by the employees. So for that, you actually, so there are two options. One is you can run that payroll register report outside the flow, or you can build a custom flow to include that uh, the payroll register, the same report, but you run it in a detailed mode. Okay, so when you run this report, you will see that there's a parameter to, to choose whether you want to run it in a summary mode or a detailed mode. Okay, so that's basically the payroll register. The payroll user need to validate to validate that. The next is the EFT payment. So this is all the direct deposits or the NACHA file that was created. Um, you can same thing. This is since this is actual a physical file. That's why you will see this view results. And this US payroll direct deposit text is the actual file that you need to upload uh, to your bank's server. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure if there's any information, but I can we can quickly check. Uh, as you can see that this is this probably has nothing. Um, that's why there's nobody with direct deposit uh, information. But if there is any, then you will see that this file will have that data. Okay. A lot of the clients prefer to actually see this, even though it's it's uh, it's doesn't make much sense for an average user. But the payroll users are you know, very familiar with 
seeing this and, and identifying what is what. Okay. Uh, and the good thing is that it does not get automatically uh, uploaded to the banks. So even if you have to roll back the payroll for whatever reason, even after going all the way to the to the direct deposit, uh, there's no incorrect file going into the bank. So you can one you're, you're only sending it once uh, the the payroll is final. Okay. But this is your NACHA file. Click on done. And then is the check payments. This is where the system has created all the check payments. And you can also, same thing, since this is an actual report that gets the checks gets printed, there could be different options that the client might use, whether it's an in-house printing uh, or some other uh, print shops. But this is the PDF file that the system has created for printing the checks. Again, this is probably the default template and you can always customize this template to change the logo if anything else needs to be uh, changed then also uh, you know change this to the maker fonts uh, either put the signature on the template or if you have a special check printing uh, printer then the signature can also be on the printer so when it prints the checks the signature gets printed okay so depend so that's purely uh, based on what your clients are doing okay so that's my uh, check printer, so the check writer file. So we have verified that. The final thing is the generate pay slips. This is what the employees are going to see. So let me click on this. I'm just waiting for that page to open. And these are the, the employees that were processed. As I told you, there were 20 records processed. 19 of them had some something to pay so we have these information so we can quickly uh, maybe check somebody how the pay slip is going to be since this pay slips are by individual employee we can see the attachment this is what the employees are going to see by view attachment and this is exactly what the employees will see on their employee self service so i just downloaded this one if i open this and you can see that it has all the details of the employee, their names, you know, their, their earnings, and all the details are available. So this is the employee's pay slip. And depending on the number of lines the employee has, it might overflow into two pages. Okay, and then this is also a template that you need to uh, customize by changing the logo, or there's if there's anything else, uh, any any uh, information that you want to add, or anything that you want to suppress, that you will have to modify. So that more or less completes all the tasks that we actually wanted to show. So at this point, my payroll is pretty much uh, done. It's processed. This is the manual step. The system is waiting on me. And to say that this is the, the verify payslips has been done. So I'm going to mark this as complete. Since this is a manual task. So the checklist was updated. Let me click on the refresh. So you can see that my verify pay slips is marked as completed and the payment register report, this is also a report that's also uh, has been completed. And also the system has moved on to the next step, which is transfer to subledger accounting. And if you are not using Fusion financials and if you do not want to transfer to subledger accounting uh, you will have to build a custom flow and then you will have to eliminate or remove these accounting steps uh, so that it does not try to transfer to subledger okay so that pretty much uh, completes before we actually conclude let's take a look at the payment register this is the uh, how much amount is getting paid again this is a report it, see it says that this is a report Anything that says this is a report will have an output. So we can go into actions and view results. And we can see the actual report. Okay, this is the payment register. And you can see that uh, this is the, the report parameters and how much was actually paid between the two 
payroll statutory unit depending on how many statutory unit uh, you have. So this is the amount that was paid. Um, so you will get these details. This is the payment register. Okay. And again, uh, this also runs in a summary mode. So if you want to see the details, you need to run this report outside the flow in a detail mode. Or if you want to embed that as a part of the flow, then you have to use a custom flow. So that concludes our session on the on how to run a full payroll for a US payroll. So this is a this was a biweekly payroll that we ran, and uh, hope this will be useful for people trying to get into cloud payroll and how it works. You can see that it's so streamlined; it has all the steps. Uh, and you can also customize depending on your uh, your client's needs on how to uh, have those steps. You can include additional reports in the, in, as a part of the flow. Uh, and if you have any questions, please uh, contact us. And you can send an email to us or you can also uh, contact us via our phone number that will be listed in this video. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues and other clients that you're working and for all your uh, payroll needs, or you can email us at admin at erpwebtutor.com. Thanks for watching.